Welcome to this week's Sunday at the Chateau, where we are traveling outside France for once, and we are in beautiful Italy, in the ancient town of Cortona. Behind me is the Piazza della Repubblica. This is the town hall, the huge bell tower. But in more modern times, this town is most famous as being the scene of the film and the book under the Tuscan sun by Frances May. This is where the author came and found her perfect home, Brama Sole, a beautiful Tuscan villa. And we're also going to stroll out of town to see if we can catch a glimpse of it. As somebody who did travel to another country and take on a huge project of renovating a historic home, I feel a big affinity. I think we should also try and find the Etruscan Museum. I think we should try and find the Etruscan antique shop. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking of going to see all the history and Philip wants to see the antiques. I think it's going to be a good day. <laughs> oh, now we are starting the proper Italian way for mm. a trip around a city. You have maybe gone for slightly more ice cream than most people would usually go for. Mm. I asked for three, three scoops. And, yeah. I mean, <laughs> and what have you got? I've got melon, mm. coconut and dark chocolate. Oh, nice. It's okay. amazing. I in a slightly less elegant form, have <laughs> the best ice cream flavour I've had, I think, maybe ever. This is ricotta and fig, and it is delicious. It's got huge chunks of fig in it. Oh, it's so good, and I'm having it with forest fruit. Mm. Cortona is an incredibly ancient city. The Romans were certainly here, but it's far, far older than that. Before them, there were the Etruscans. The walls around the city were built by them in the 5th century BC. And we're going to go into the Etruscan Museum now, which has a stunning Etruscan chandelier discovered near Cortona. The museum is housed in a beautiful ancient 13th century palace. And we're going to start down in the basements, which were once the prisons. And we are going back a long way in time. Look at the jewelry. It seems so modern to me. Over 2000 years old and all of it is something that I would wear today. Really, we don't change, do we? Humans do not change. Look at the little acorns. There is a writing stylus. I can't look at things like this without wondering, what were they writing? Was it a list of accounts or an inventory? Was it legal papers? Or was it poetry? Was it a story that someone had invented? Was it a love letter? Here we have the sublime next to the ridiculous because these are from the seventh century BC. And I love the stags. The stag heads would have been appliqued onto a throne, apparently. How they know that, I do not know. And very majestic it would have been. I find them striking in their modernity. And next to them is something even more striking in its modernity, because it's 7th century BC, feet of furniture. And I suspect we've all seen feet like that at Ikea. When I see things made as beautifully and with as much whimsy and strong artistic vision as these show, I can't help but imagine the artist showing his or her friends, oh, look what I made today, and them laughing at how cool the cows are. <laughs> I mean, they're just so beautiful. Philip and I often discuss whether we prefer things that are very modern or maybe a little more 18th century and detailed. And I tend to veer a little bit more to what I've always described as modern. And I realise that's nonsense to call it modern or even contemporary because in fact, it's more stylized. I, I tend to go for very bold, stylized designs, and they've been going for 3,000 years. It's just that fashions keep changing. There's no such thing as new and old. It all just keeps coming round. Now we're reaching the Roman era. This is a statue of Heracles that dates from the 1st or 2nd century BC. You might know him better by his Roman name, Hercules. He's looking pretty satisfied there. It's not, nothing like the Disney version, is it? <laughs> <laughs> Whilst we're having a wonderful time looking around this museum, here is a reminder of this building's rather dark purpose as a prison at one point. It's layers upon layers upon layers of history everywhere you go in the city. Here is a Roman mosaic floor, rather simple but beautiful in its design, and around it they recreated Roman wall paintings. And what I find extraordinary is how little has changed in formal designs. This design of a diamond inside a rectangle can be seen exactly like that in Versailles today. 
So there they did it in marble. I love this because we only ever see fragments in museums, but here it is an artist's impression of what it would have looked like inside a Roman home. It's so beautiful. Really, I feel I could just move in. Lolling around on the cushions, reading a good book, having some local wine and a bit of cheese. Oh, maybe one of those figs that's going past. And now we are going into the special room dedicated to the Etruscan lamp found near Cortona. I was expecting it to be in really dark bronze, like a black thing. I did not think it was going to be this ornate and elaborate and splendid. It was actually discovered completely accidentally in 1840 and quickly became the jewel of this museum. It was used to light a place of worship and it's made with various levels of decoration, one above the other. You can see that going all around the base, there are what they describe as sirens, but look a little bit more like harpies to us. They seem to have talons, and there's definitely men. It's fairly obvious to spot the men amongst them. And then below that, there's a series of frees of waves with dolphins leaping. Then there's hunting scenes with various animals, and at the heart of it all, the face of a gorgon. Okay, I don't know about you, Philip, I think this was really worth coming to see. It's amazing. Just think of that over 2,000 years ago, lighting a sanctuary somewhere. It must have been spectacular, all lit with oil in each of the little lamps going all the way around it. This statue was discovered in Pompeii, but it gives us an idea of what the Roman villas here would have been like, how they would have been decorated. He's a statue of an ephi. Now, an ephib was a young man between the ages of 18 and 20 who was undergoing military training. And he certainly seems to be in tip-top physical form. In fact, this statue has been described as an object of incomparable beauty. And I really have to agree. It probably would have been placed in a summer dining room, an outdoor dining room, very luxurious, where evening banquets would have been held. And I think looking at objects like this, we can start to imagine what life would have been like in Roman times in Italy. But whilst this museum is dedicated mainly to the early history of the city, the Etrusca and the Roman, even the prehistoric finds, the rooms themselves remind us that history did not stop with the end of the Roman era. This room has an inscription from 1675, and when you look up, you can see the Medici coat of arms, because for a period during the Renaissance, they were the rulers of Cortona. Life goes on, history keeps turning. But of course, even the Medici dynasty would pass, and this spectacular porcelain temple is rather a symbol of that. It was originally designed to go on a rotating circular base so that you could see every part of it. It's a tempietto dedicated to the glories of Tuscany. Around it are 73 medals showing the main members of the Medici family and the figures at the base represent the cardinal virtues which sustain and fuel the family. But this was made in the mid-18th century when the Medicis were coming to the end of their power. The allegory in the centre is time abducting beauty. All things fade, all things come to an end. Let's carry on going forward in time and yeah, this is a perfect place to stop and have a little rest. This room feels right. I love this. It's quite a big bed. Honestly, the bed crown that we worked on together, Philip, is put to shame by that. <laughs> <laughs> that one means business. But I think even more than that, I love the ones over the doors. Look at the swans. Oh, they're so beautiful. Not sure about the arms, though. A bit creepy, or is it actually just quite Beauty and the Beast? See this beauty in the beast. <laughs> well, I mean, you always say that you want a living, breathing home. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. There's even a spectacular 18th century library here, which is making me long even more for a library at La Land. Definitely one day. I think it's good to end our visit to this museum with this model of Cortona. We're staying in an apartment block just here, just around this city wall here. So we walked up this narrow street to the first square, which is where I made my introduction to this video. And we came here to the second square, and we're in this palace now. What you see represented in this town 
is layer upon layer of history. From Etruscan and prehistoric remains found deep in the soil to the Medici fortress at the top. Back out in the heat of the day, because now it's time for us to go and see Cortona as it is in our day and age. Maybe we should start with a spot of light window shopping. Ooh. <laughs> I love this jewellery. I like the ancient Roman style jewellery, Etruscan as well. I just love looking in shop windows. It's nice to look at pretty things. I'm loving it here. And look, next to this ancient bell tower. Oh, a hat shop. I actually could really do this because it is so hot. And it's nearly 40 degrees every day and I'm very British and I'm wilting in this interior. Look at this shop, it's so pretty. I love big hats but I think I'm too small for them. Yeah. <laughs> the camera keep going. Yes. I love it. I actually really love this one. It's so pretty. That's way better with this dress. I want like the white band with this dress. Do you have any more with the white band? Just that one. I like this one a lot. It's unlike any other one and it's good for packing because it's flat. <laughs> so I can go in my suitcase. <laughs> it reminds me a little bit of like the new look. Yeah, yeah, bit dual. Yeah, that's what they said. Also, I can have a ponytail with it. Oh, there's an excellent frog here. I love these little alleyways. I mean, I don't think I can fit in shops anymore, so we'll just <laughs> window shopping from now on. But I feel much, much cooler. Not in the pretty. hip sense of the word, though. <laughs> I mean, I think you look very cool for about 1870. Thank you very much, yes. Uh-oh, Philip has spotted an antique shop. <laughs> Will I fit in it with this hat is the only question. Ooh. If there's a lot of little what ornaments, I might be knocking them off. Yeah. Left, right and centre. And we have to buy them. It's oh. just noir. Mm. Oh, everything looks lovely. Okay, we should definitely go and have a look in here. I know, have you seen a mirror? Yeah, the mirror is great. Okay, so let's go in. There are amazing old posters and adverts here that are all gorgeous. I'm kind of falling in love with this Martini Rosso one. I love Martini Rosso. Yeah, <laughs> look, look, it's being held aloft by, is that pigeons? You know, I love a good pigeon. <laughs> this is so nice. Oh, look at that one. This is gorgeous. And look at this one. I just love the style and the colors. They're so cheerful. 1938. Little bugs. Sorry, I promise I'll stop. I really could do this absolutely all day. But it's really hair raising in here because it's very narrow back there and I'm terrified that my hat is going to knock something off the shelf. <laughs> By the way, I saw an amazing chandelier. Yeah? But it's already sold. Oh, show me anyway. I love that one back oh, there. Oh, the one at the back. It's so beautiful. Be beautiful, yes. Did you see the Murano chandelier? I love the colour of it, mm. that blue. Oh, wow, the phones. We don't have um, old fashioned fixed line anymore at the chateau, but. <gasps> The pink one with the gold. What a great telephone. I wish we still used those. Philip's making friends. I love those. <laughs> And the glasses, a lot of Murano glasses. I love a glass. I think I'm in love with these ones. I really, really like them. If you want to see better, it's possible to take a one and one. There are really exquisite Venetian glasses in here, uh, none of which I can afford. Though I like the, the white ones with the engraving. Mm -hmm. They're so stunningly beautiful. Look at the workmanship of this one. You see all of the engraving. It's so beautiful. And they're, they're taking the grapes, they're harvesting. There's the grapes in the basket being carried by a little donkey being led by a very cheerful looking boy. And they are pressing the grapes <laughs> in a barrel. Now that's the sort of thing to drink from, but it's 640, which uh, sadly means I can't, I can't take it home. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you for showing us. All of them are amazing. But on a more modest level, I have found these that I absolutely love. They're so pretty. I'm just getting a set for two people. There, we can use them whilst we're here, Philip. Just these, please. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> got the glasses. Philip's on the phone to his mother. 
And what he doesn't know is when I said I was running back to get the microphone in case it got windy later, I was actually picking up a bottle of wine and washing two of the glasses. So it's a little surprise when we get to the end of the walk, we'll be able to have a little drink. Well, it was very steep. And it turns out that outside in the town, there's actually an escalator. I thought I was gonna to have to walk up here. I've never been so happy to see an escalator in my life. <laughs> I love this town, it just gets better and better. This place is magical. I mean, where else in the world can you have a view of Lake Trasimene where Hannibal defeated a Roman army in 217 BC? I feel surrounded by history, completely steeped in it and part of this amazing continuation. It's quite humbling and I feel very fortunate to be able to be a little part of life in Cortona just for these few days. Look at the church down there. What a beautiful place. In fact, St. Francis of Assisi thought so too, because just out of town, there is a monastery that he founded where it's still possible to see the cell that he stayed in. That was back in the 13th century. It's very hard, you see. We, we do put ourselves out to get this vlog for you all. No corners are cut. Trekking up hills, down dales to get to the Villa Bramasole. Ish, we took yesterday. <laughs> It's the most beautiful walk alongside these old stone walls. People have been living here for so many centuries and each generation has left a mark, a memory of their passing here. And goodness knows I'm not known for my walking ability, but I am loving this. Also, it's the evening and it was honestly nearly 40 degrees all day, but now it's cooled down to joy. I love the sound of the cicadas. Look at the view. This walk is absolutely stunning. Now I'm really happy. We're off the main road and on a little track. I love the sound of the dry leaves crunching underfoot. Ahead of us stretches the Chiani Valley. And we're just walking alongside olive tree after olive tree with vines planted just behind them. But the thing I love the most is the smell. It reminds me of growing up in the south of France on all of the summers that I spent with my grandmother. It smells of summer, of wild herbs and of heat. I was not expecting this to be so beautiful. <laughs> me neither. I mean, it is insane. I mean, and I see you've got your walking shoes on. Oh yeah, of course. You know I mean some serious walking when the lobsters are with me. <laughs> Surprisingly good on dry land, actually. I can't imagine a more Tuscan view. <laughs> and I know that we can't see a medieval hilltop town in the distance, but that's because we're in <laughs> yes. the medieval hilltop town. Well, much older there. than medieval. It's just there. This is such an adventure. Who would know that civilization is just 10 minutes walk away? I wonder how old that wall was. Certainly parts of the city walls are Etruscan, so parts of the city walls are over 2,000 years old. Lots of little cacti growing wild. Yeah. Okay, we're definitely not in central France anymore. I love the haze and the sunset. Yeah. Yes, the church down there. Oh, hang on. Sustenance. Wild blackberries. And some of them already. <laughs> I thought you meant the uh, the church bells. <laughs> Sustenance for the soul. And here. Sustenance for the stomach. Mm. I might need more than one. Isn't this everyone's idea of heaven? That's so good. No, really good. Filming with one hand and getting more blackberries mm. with the other. Mm. They're tiny, but very, very sweet. Must be the heat. Did I tell you about my aunt's farmhouse in France? Yeah, that you used to go to as a child. Yes. Opposite that, there was a field with sheep. The old stone walls were lined with wild blackberries. Mm. And every summer, we'd climb over the fence, um, get as many as we could, and make it into j uh, jams. Well, we did that maybe once. But we ate the, <laughs> the, <laughs> we, we ate the blackberries. There was one glorious jam-making episode. Yes, and I were like, never again. <laughs> Just like Nathie with cooking, every single time she cooks. Yes. Or me with cooking, for that matter. Okay, I have a little sustenance for the rest of the walk. Onwards, Philip! Yes, I just see one that I really want. A really juicy fat one? Yes. You've actually disappeared into a blackberry bush. Yes, and I'm also getting stuck. This one's for you. No, you have to have it. No, 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 it's the best one I've seen. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, it is. Thank you. I only got stung like three times. <laughs> <laughs> Such a hero. <laughs> right. That's the best one, right? That was the best one. Good. There's the church up on the hill and the ruins of the Medici fortress. It's so idyllic here. I know. I can't believe it. Thank goodness we came on this walk. Yeah. I can imagine that just the route to the house would have been enough to make Francis Mays fall in love with it. I haven't seen the villa yet and I think I'm in love with it. Look, almonds. I don't think they're ready yet. I didn't bring my knife with me, which is really silly. I should always have it on me when I'm in Italy in case of a cheese emergency. <laughs> Is that working? No, it's not working out for me. We'll take this with us. You know, work out whether I can get into it or not later. We'll just take a few more. But we're just growing here a while, so it seems silly not to try. So extremely idyllic, <laughs> I keep repeating <laughs> myself. But... Oops, nearly. Can I just get it? Got oh. it. Okay, we'll find out later. That was a really long walk, but boy was it worth it. We found it and it is far more beautiful than I imagined. It's more beautiful than the villa that they used in the movie. Yeah. So this is the real Villa Bramasole. It's breathtaking. The flowers over the balcony, it is spectacular. I couldn't come up here without the book. There are some words in the 20th anniversary afterword of Under the Tuscan Sun that I would like to read now because Frances starts the afterword by saying how she was terrified the night before she bought this house. She couldn't sleep, she thought she'd probably done the wrong thing, she nearly didn't go ahead with it, but she did go ahead with it, she took that leap and now 20 years later it can't be that good, some have remarked, but it is. If only I had the ability to reveal how good I find life on my little hillside. Brahma Sole, my abandoned villa beneath the Etruscan town wall of Cortona, became home, and more than home, bullseye, heart's needle, centre of my private universe. The apricot rose facade, shuttered windows open to the southern sun, profuse geraniums, clematis, lemons and lavender burgeoning in the garden, all this exotic beauty symbolises a risk I took to change the life I was given into a life I made with my own two hands. I think that's very beautiful and something we should all remember. It's always possible to change our lives if we feel the need and this sort of magic can come of it. I'm thankful every day that I made the leap 16 years ago to move to France and I'm so happy that France has made the same leap here. I just wish that I had her incredible talent of putting it into words. What did she just say? <laughs> it's time for a little refreshment. Do you think I carry this for fun? Yes. I never carry a <laughs> A little bit of wine. Oh. And remember these? Yes. I ran back and washed them. <laughs> so I think this, this is the right sort of stop on our walk. You're such an angel. <laughs> I mean, the view's gorgeous. I haven't actually asked if you want any, but I'm I'm going with a supposition that yes you do yes yes voila thank you very much Ooh. i love this glass it's just a simple modern glass painted but i really like it cheers philip cheers so a great holiday and a great walk this isn't a bad view for our little pit stop really is rather good isn't it we have been walking uphill for half an hour. I mean, there was a little bit on the escalators, but the rest really <laughs> has been uphill for half an hour. This was much needed. I love Italy. I wish I'd brought a little bit of cheese as well. Yeah, have, have your cheese, cheese knife, remember? True. <laughs> We'd have been lost without the cheese knife. <laughs> we better get home quickly because Vivian and her sister Ashley are waiting for us. We're all going to go out to a little Italian trattoria tonight for dinner. So. We need to get back down this hillside. Downhill's probably easier than uphill. That's what I'm telling myself. It's going to be much faster. <laughs> well... <laughs> Dinner is that way. Okay. Calm down! <laughs> You're just like Isabel. You can't keep up! <laughs> There's Cortona ahead of us. Now we get to walk back through the park, and I love this park. It has the most extraordinary views, though I think not as beautiful as the ones we just saw. But it also has the fountain from the film Under the Tuscan Sun. But the fountain isn't quite as you'll have remembered it from the movie. Here's the fountain, but for the scene in the film, they actually made a replica and put it into the main square so that it felt more within Cortona. It is in Cortona, but it's actually in the park. It is so refreshing after this walk. 
I love this place. Look, there's a little dog, there's music. We're in Italy. This is the end of our walk. <laughs> Looks like a great choice. Yes. A typical trattoria is exactly what I'm in the mood for. Absolutely, and this place is amazing. <laughs> it's where all the locals come and so it's it's a lot of traditional dishes and they just bring just bring it out and and let and them bring it out. Vats of wine. <laughs> Literal vats of wine. <laughs> We're all having a spiritual moment, as Ashley put it. It's fried porcini mushrooms. It's one of the best things ever tasted, ever. And I haven't even started on the carpaccio beef with truffles, because this is too good. It's so good. <laughs> I'm just giggling. I'm just giggling about it. <laughs> Why is this so good? Have we done this before? Why does everyone eat fried mushrooms? Why do we eat here for every meal? <laughs> this is just carrying on. Yes. Now I have ravioli with sage and butter sauce. This is everything. It's still wild pork. <laughs> <laughs> and what is this? You're having a bolognese? Yes, something similar to bolognese. And you are having... Actually, this is pasta con fungi. Oh. And duro oh. And duck. <laughs> yeah. mm. Good night from Cortona, everyone. That was Good the night. most amazing meal. <laughs> <laughs> a huge thank you to all of our patrons who make this vlog possible and the Dauphins and Dauphines of La Land. Yadel and Ether, Alice Allen, Dan Banda, Wailing Banshee, Brian Barnard, Brandon and John, Michael, Cecilia Begum, Denise Behrens, Danelle Benakovic, Jill Bidwell, Candice Blackburn, Candice Ned Borkowski, Clara Butcher, Paulina Calabro, Chloe Chalakani, Lindsay C. Chelton, Steve and Sarah Cole, Linda Sue Concepcion, Erin Conklin, Zoe Dork, Sylvia Dem, Jim Demersman and Richard Patternord, Sakura Dennis, Zane Dixon, Jason Dubby, Jackie Ellison, Nicholas W. Fairfax, Tracy Ferrari, Caroline Furster, Kevin Fossum, Abigail Grant, Fifi Greenberg, Crystal Hardy, Brenda Harris, Delaine Hallbrook, Kim Hasselhoff, David and Tong Henderson, Camilla Herrera, Jacqueline Holmes and Ken Bates, Priscilla Hoob, Lissandra Hawley, Melissa Jansen, Brian Kelsey and Phil Burnt, Jimmy Kemp, Nadia Kennedy, Lisa LaForge, Dave and Summer Lalande, Morgan Lawley, Angel Leonard, Victoria Lapine, Janet Huff Lombard, Marina Frank Martin, Meredith Robert Miller, Joanne Morton, Karen Nicholson, Kathy Nori, Maureen Palmer, Ellen Person, Wendy Piatek, Frank Poposki and James Snow, Tamara Price, Armin Rahman, Tonya Renee, RJB, Bettina Rojek, Hanny Ross, Mary Ryan, Elizabeth Scanlon, Sven Schreiber, Lisa Schultz, Jennifer Shanks, Rebecca Shurek, Carl and Laurie Siebert, Teresa Sloan, Patty Suhu, Susan Stevens, Monty Stipora, Sabrina Surratt, and the Leaf House, Sarah Thornton, Colleen Troyer, Renee Vallelli, Victoria, Jessica Walker, Brandy Walton, Laura Watkins, Lucas Wallen, James Whalen, Cheryl Whitaker, Linda Wiest, Christine Wilson, Winnie de la Cocopoo, Greg Wood, David Young, and Lodovico Zordonazzo.